Howdy ho, everybody. Susan Gerbeck from Psychics Explained here today. So I've had this information for a while and I've been holding off because I wanted to have um, the published article before I started talking about this other stuff that I found while I was researching for the published article. So you should know by now, if you don't, um, I would appreciate it if you would come to Skeptical Inquire or you can find the link in the description of this video for this article that came out on March 12th. I'm recording this on March 15th. So it's only been a few days. And this is an article that is kind of the accumulation of a lot of research that's been done over the years on Thomas John. And it is called Thomas John, same as he ever was. I hope you give it a read. I've had a lot of feedback on it. One person's found a misspelling, but most <laughs> mostly people say it's very readable, easy to understand, and they think it's powerful. So in this article, I'm going to be talking about this one thing right here. J journalist Jennifer Weigel, W-E-I-G-E-L. Now, you'll notice that her name has two Fs in it, J-E-N-N-I-F-F-E-R. And that's important because it makes finding information on somebody when you're hot reading much easier. Like my last name, Gerbic, is so much easier to find because there's not that many Gerbics. So when you have an unusual name, you're most likely going to get a reading from Thomas John. So if you attend one of his Zoom meetings or Zoom things, I think he's still doing those. I'm not sure. It's gotten really quiet in the Thomas John world. Apparently, he's doing a lot of uh, TikTok. But what he's doing on TikTok, I'm told, are like putting up filtered pictures of himself looking goofy and, and things like that. He's not really doing the live readings anymore. Uh, maybe he is. I'm just not catching him. My team has been busy working on lots of other psychics. And uh, Thomas John is just kind of like, he's done, you know, put a fork in him already. But let's let's um, look this over because this is all very interesting. So in Jennifer uh, Weigel, she has a conversation with Thomas John. Okay, so you can read about that in that article. But what we're going to talk about today is her book. Now, she wrote this book. It's called Psychics, Healers, and Mediums, A Journalist, A Road Trip, and Voices from the Other Side by Jennifer Weigel. Now... Jennifer Weigel is a journalist. She was she's in Chicago and she was very popular in Chicago. Well, she probably still is. She's 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 still with us. And um, Thomas John was very active in Chicago. So it would not shock me at all if Thomas John knew a lot about this woman who was a public figure in Chicago at the time that he was active in Chicago. Um, let's show you a cover of the book. And if you'd like to pick it up, you can get it on Amazon or you can get it, you know, lots of different places. I don't have a copy. I'm kind of tempted to get one. Um, but uh, here it is, $16.95 and no reviews over on barnesandnobles.com. Okay, so what we're looking at is looking inside. Now, I didn't make a screenshot of this because I don't want it. I don't want to take her her book from her. So we're just going to just briefly go over this a little bit and you can look at it yourself Buy the book, you know, go for it. So chapter one, this is in 2017. So she may have written this in 2016 and it came out in 2017. I, I, I don't really know, but chapter one is on the Manhattan medium, Thomas John, which is what he was called before he became the seatbelt psychic. And a grief vampire. I had not published on Thomas John. I had not done um, the um, the sting that brought him to my attention, Operation Pizza Roll. I had not done that yet in 2016. It was in 2017 we did, but I didn't publish. It didn't get published, I think, until 2018, February of 2018 in the New York Times Magazine. All right. So... She leads off with Thomas John. Now she's a reporter. So he knows she's going to re review him. She knows, he knows she's going to, he's going to sit down with her. So when you have some foreknowledge of a person you're going to hot read um, or read, it's, it's easy to get a little information, especially if 
you are in Chicago. That's your 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 jam. And she's a popular person in Chicago. And he probably knows people who knows her or, you know, whatever. But somehow or other, she she gets him. So she sits down with him and she does the same old thing that he always talks about the watch and at the age of four with his grandfather and his grandfather um, appears to him to talk to him about his watch and wants him. I mean, you know, granddad comes back from the dead and he wants to talk about a watch. Come on now. Anyway, so it talks a little bit about Thomas John's life, but all of this we know because Thomas John talks about this all the time. All right. So she met him in 2015 and she was scheduled to interview him for his her monthly author series at the theater on his book, Never Argue with a Dead Person. So see what it says right here? I was scheduled to interview him. In other words, he didn't just meet her off the street and run into her and she says, let's sit down and do a reading. No, he knew she was going to be uh, there. So, of course, it's not hard to get the information. We decided to meet in the lobby of his hotel room, hotel, where he would give me a reading during my lunch hour on the day of our event. So she's going to interview him prior to uh, the author series that she's doing for him at this book thing. So he's she's taking a lunch and he's she goes to his hotel and goes to the uh, area to eat and um, they eat and she, he gives her a reading. OK, so this is an arranged thing. She says she's been working as a columnist for the Chicago Tribune for five years, and she'd just been given notice a few days prior to the, that that her services are no longer needed. She thought she was up for a promotion. Okay, so you could read all this. She says she was completely blindsided by being um, let go, laid off. But she said that they insisted on keeping it quiet, and she was keeping it quiet. So she says she went to go have this meeting with him and that he didn't know that she had been laid off. Okay, well, that's hit or miss. We'll see what ends up happening with that. All right. She only told her boyfriend, she says, until the end of the month, not even her family. All right. Coincidentally, she put her house on the market and was dealing with a very high maintenance buyer who was struggling to grasp the meaning of the term as is. So they went a 15. Okay, so she's going on about selling her house and she, she hung up the phone. Okay. It was our first offer. We will get another one. So she's turning this deal falls through and she says, I'm going to, um, she hangs up the phone, walks in and talks to the, um, Thomas John. So she's talking about how handsome he is tall, dark, and handsome, wore blue jeans and a dark jean jacket. His voice was soft and pitch higher than I expected. Okay. So they sat down. And he says, have you done anything like this before? And she says, yes, I've written three books about people like you. So she is a believer. Um, she is not writing from a skeptic perspective. She is um, totally in line with belief in this uh, ability to communicate with the dead. And she may be what we call here on this channel, a motivated sitter. In other words, she's going to talk and give them feedback because she wants so badly for this to be real. Right. So um, we know here, you guys have all learned over the, over the last, it's almost been a year, actually has been a year. Thank you guys. It's been a year. Um, so she's learned, um, we've learned that what ends up happening is these people, there's, unless you have a transcript, I mean, an audio or a video, even better transcript, then we can sometimes, um, a motivated sitter will embellish or help lead on or assist to make the reading go smoother. Now, I think she's got an audio recording of this because it's pretty well transcribed or she's embellishing a lot. All right. So I think she's got audio. All right. So she starts talking about having interviewed dozens of mediums and psychics since my father died of a brain tumor in 2001. I've experienced everything from total frauds to people who knew stuff they couldn't possibly have known ahead of time and everything in between if thomas wanted to scam me he could find a slew of facts online very easily i was looking for the things you can't research the stuff that only she would know okay this is what we hear from people all the time 
like the fact that I just killed a real estate deal before walking through the door. Mm. So, all right, here we go. Um, I know it's a common name, but do you have a John that has died? And she says, yes, I do. My grandfather. Okay. This is common. Instead of waiting and letting, letting him come up with a last name for John, she goes ahead and tells him who the John is. So um, this is a common tactic with somebody who already believes that mediumship is real. And they give more information than they should. So we don't know at this point. I mean, I know he's a hot reader. But we don't know if he's saying John because he's already done some research on her. Or if he's saying John because it's a common name and just throwing it out there. If he was a cold reader and he's just throwing out the name John, she's just walked right into it. It's my grandfather. His name is John. So that's <laughs> like red flags all over the place. But we know he's probably hot redder. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Spoiler alert. So he says, I sort of felt a not nice energy from him, like kind of mean and tough. See how he says that? Oops. And she's like, yeah, yeah, here he is. And she's thinking, she says, she makes it sound like she's thinking that my grandfather's thrived on conflict. It was known for not speaking to family members for years if they didn't agree. So she's probably not saying that. But. We don't know. There are quotes marks right here where she says kind of mean and tough. Oops, sorry, guys. Kind of mean and tough. Those are quote marks. This other part looks like she's thinking it. So did she say it? Did she not? Is that a hit? And I have had people say that kind of information is specific enough for them to believe that they have a hit, which is amazing to me because that's not a hit. That's throwing out something and it's stuck. Well, it's sort of stuck because Look, this guy's had, uh, this is her, this is her grandfather. He, he might have been a lovely man at some point. He's been married four times. I'm sure he must've been a nice guy some point in his life. So when a psychic medium throws out, oh, he, she's really happy and she's outgoing or, you know, she was a kind soul or, you know, she's, she was really talkative or whatever generic thing they say, you can't lose because if, the sitter says, no, she was actually kind of the type that never really talked very much. She was very shy and, and reclusive. Well, then the medium only has to say something like, in her youth, she was very outgoing and talkative. Or they could say, now that she's on the other side, she's very outgoing and talkative. Same here. So if he says he was kind of a jerk, he was really kind of mean and tough, well, she could say, well, no, I always saw him as a loving, wonderful man. And he would say, well, when he was growing up, I see him as a very tough man. Was he in the military? Was he, you know, did he have a lot of adverse, uh, adversarial, adversarial things happen to him in life? And that's why he appears tough. He was tough and he stood up for his family. And he, see, you just go where the sitter wants you to go with the words that they're saying. And you just change it to be, oh, well, tough but i mean tough like in another kind of way <laughs> or they say well he used to be tough or now he's tough or he is tough you know you can't lose because it, they're going to make it fit the medium's going to make it fit and you the sitter who's motivated is going to make it fit so those kinds of things that seem specific sure as heck aren't specific and anybody out there who knows who has kids you got adult kids in your life from their perspective, you are a completely different person than who you think you should, you are. And because you don't exist until they get to a certain age where they realize, oh, mom or dad is like a human, a separate person that has their own life. And <laughs> it could be a lot later in life. They don't think of you as a, as a young person, a child. They don't really, they don't introspectively spend a lot of time thinking about what you would be life like or their grandchildren so anyway all right um next he says let's go back over there he says this is your dad's side so this must be your dad's dad okay so that's hot reading or a guess because it's 50 50 right so 
where he says, this is on your dad's side. So this must be your dad's dad. So this is why I think there's a transcript that there's audio of this because that's a little too specific. Indeed. And it's true. All right. I'm not sure what he's doing here. It's like he wants to make this about him. So those, again, generic statements. Keep in mind, Thomas John and all these other mediums have done thousands and thousands and thousands of, of readings. And it's um, it comes out sounding very natural when it's actually like something they say commonly. I don't want to freak you out. If this is actually something very recent or something coming up, but your dad is stepping through, okay, whatever. Your dad is making me aware of some sort of job shift. It's either just about to happen or it just happened. And she's like, what? There's no way he could know that kind of thing. But he didn't specifically say what was going on. And that could just have been a general statement that said, I feel a job change coming on, or it hasn't happened or it's coming up soon, some kind of job change. Now, People, anybody watching this who's had readings done, this is a common phrase for them to say about a job change. I feel like you're you're thinking about making a change or maybe there's an opportunity that's about to happen that you, you are thinking about or it hasn't, but it, it's about to happen or it just happened, right? So everybody out there who's, who's seen lots and lots of readings knows that that's a common cold reading statement that seems very specific. But it's not because and and Jennifer here should know better because she's she's written three books on uh, mediumship and spirituality and so on. So I don't understand why she's not seeing that as a common trope. I mean, he might as well throw out and I, there's coins or there's a cardinals or something. I mean, come on now. That's that's just a normal thing. So um, your dad is bringing that up. Oh, oh, oh OK. Here, let me just read off of here. By the way, is someone in St. Louis? I mean, because you guys can go look at this yourself. And she says, my brother just moved there. Good, he says, because your dad is bringing that up. Well, yeah, okay. When you get something positive, you just throw it out there. And someone else is moving there too. You don't know about it yet, but it's in the works. It will be a surprise. That's not a hit. That's just, <laughs> okay. Um, who is the Aries around you? And it feels like a boy. All right. There are 12 Zodiac signs, or maybe there's 13. Some people say there's 13. So the odds of hitting an Aries are one in 12. That's not very uh, high odds. I mean, that's not a very big deal, right? So somebody in your life, you know, is an Aries. And if you don't know they're an Aries, they're an Aries, but you just don't know it. Am I, am I psychic or what? I mean, that's amazing, right? Somebody watching this right now is a Scorpio. And I know there's another Capricorn watching right now. See, leave it in the, leave it in the, um, this, the comments, please. I want to know who my Capricorn or my Scorpio, because my gosh, I'm just psychic. All right. And she says, it's my son. Brit's birthday is April 14th. Is that Aries? Like she doesn't already know. And so, I mean, why would she throw that out if she didn't know her son was an Aries? Um, so she's given a lot of information. She says, I have a son. I have his name is Brett, Brit, and his birthday is April 14th. So that's an awful lot of information she's just given to the psychic, who we already know has hot redder, so it doesn't really matter anyway. But it, for somebody who's supposedly been writing about these people for, for a long time and doing a lot of readings and listening to them, she's she's doing exactly what I say. A motivated sitter who believes, you already believe, so you just go ahead and throw out all the information because you know that they're they're probably psychic. You know, Let's just go ahead and throw the information out there. I mean, this is just so sad, really, right? This is an investigative journalist or is just a regular journalist? Because... No. All right. So your dad didn't meet him. So she, he probably knows her child is young and he knows when um, John died, but he definitely knows about him. Now with your son, is he changing schools? Okay. So this is a young child. He already knows this changing schools from kindergarten, uh, preschool, kindergarten, um, going from, from, um, 
elementary schools into higher ages, you know, kids are always kind of like, you know, there's, there's this little bit of time that there might be changing if they're young, you know, preschool to um, kindergarten and so on. That's possible. Changing schools. All right. So um, she says that's a hit because she says within the last 24 hours, Britt's father and I had been discussing the fact that we were not happy with our son's school and wanted to make a switch. We were just thinking about it. He's going into fourth grade, giving more information to the psychic. Okay. I've raised children and I know lots of people who have children. And many times you say, I wonder if we should change school or I'm not happy with the school, or you're thinking about suggesting another school or you're not happy with the teacher. These kinds of things happen. It's a common trope again. You're, and it just so happens that she just now remembers that that happened. Now, um, it's it's like the the phone ringing and you, you remember and you say somebody I was just thinking of them and the phone rang and they were on the phone. Okay, it's kind of like that that trope where you say, um, I was just thinking about school changing school. And then now you mention it. Well, if he hadn't mentioned it, you probably wouldn't have remembered because that was probably insignificant. And you probably, like I say, talk about that kind of thing all the time. It's not really a big hit is what I'm saying. All right. Um, he says, I'm feeling you want to look into it. It's not for the academic, but more for the social emotional piece. His school is now is not 100% of a social fit. He seems very sensitive -y to me very hyper aware and i do see it i do see a good trajectory with him though thomas just say he should change his school or not don't give us this wishy-washy stuff and that's the sad thing about psychics is because they um they can help guide your life but sometimes they don't really know all the stuff and maybe it's not a good idea for him to change his school maybe maybe well he actually it's just gives her a little bit of both right he never really actually says but in her mind, she interprets it to mean a certain thing. All right. And in fact, she answers it. Oh, that's good to know. Not that it was anything relevant. She says, okay, uh, your dad is stepping in here with your work. It seems like he wants to help you with something. I don't know if he was someone you could go to for advice on job stuff, but he's sort of talking that over. Did you hear that? Let's read that sentence again together. I don't know if he was someone you would go to for advice on job stuff, but he is sort of talking that over or he's sort of taking that over. I don't know if he was someone you would go to for advice on job stuff. So what did he just say? That he is or he isn't? I don't know. So why is he even mentioning it? I don't know if he's the type that you would go to for advice on job stuff. So... Here she responds, not to him, but in the book, she responds, my father had been a journalist for 30 years. When he was alive, we talked every day, mostly about work. So she's answering that question. She's answering the, this question that Thomas John has asked, which is not any statement at all. I don't know if he's the type of person you would have come to if you had questions about work. And she says, and she's thinking that's a hit because I went to him every day. But it also would have been a hit if she said, my father and I never talked about work. It would, it, either way, it's a hit in her mind, right? Okay. He's saying you're better off. It's actually a good thing because I don't feel a good energy with that company. It's negative. You're better off being away from it. So what is he talking about? So he's now found out that she's she's been laid off from her job or not. We don't know. It's kind of a vague thing. You know, I'm I'm getting a I'm getting a feeling that I I think I'm getting negative energy with that uh, neighbor of yours. The you know that neighbor, not specifically naming a neighbor. <laughs> it's just a thing you say. It sounds really specific, but it's if it is if it hits in your brain, it's specific. Again, keep in mind we don't have the full transcript. I mean, there could be there could be uh, a ton of uh, stuff left out of here. But this is edited for clarity. Now we know there's a lot missing, right? Okay. Um, 
she says, anyone who worked inside the Tribune at the time called it the Toxic Tower. So maybe he knew that. He knows she's worked there. So your dad is saying the summer will be kind of light and getting some of your own projects started. Something will present itself in September. Basically, until then, there will be money to float. Your dad is showing me Washington, D.C. Does somebody connect there? All right. I live in Chicago. And Washington, D.C. is not like that far away for these people. It's another big city. And so having a connection to Washington, D.C. isn't like all that super strange, right? Uh, it is like the capital of the United States and has a ton of employees and so on. So it's not like that weird. And he's just saying Washington, D.C. So there's 50 states and a couple like, you know, Washington, D.C. So that's not all that odd. It'd be like me saying, hey, um, you know, I'm getting a psychic thing, something about I'm getting something about Utah. Is there something about Utah? Is somebody somebody have a connection to Utah? How many people here now have a connection to Utah? Put it in the comments. <laughs> I want to hear. I might be psychic. I don't know. Um, or if you're in one big city and you mention another big city, it's not like he said, um, who has a connection to absolutely nowhere, Iowa? <laughs> and she says, oh my gosh, how did you know? <sighs> okay. Oh, and something will present itself in September. Well, you know, something is going to present yourself in September. I guarantee it. Somebody is, I mean, there's going to be something happening in September. Everybody, you know that, right? Okay. I'm recording this in March. So in September, let's come back and revisit this video because I see psychic psychically there's something coming to all of you, everybody listening in September. The summer is going to be kind of light and getting some of your own projects started. Well, when you when you put that into somebody's mind, maybe maybe they're saying, you know, I should I should get that part that project started. The, the psychic was telling me this is a good time to start a new project. Maybe I should start that new project. And besides, how do you know he's going to be around in September or the summer? Well, whatever. And she'll have forgotten about it by then. That's what most psychics say. She says, my sister goes to college there, which is again, here you go. Here's some more. Here, let me hand you another piece of slice of this pie of my life. I have a sister. She's in college in Washington, D.C. Here, here, Thomas John, take, take my, take my information. I'm shoving it. <laughs> I'm trying to give it to you. so frustrating because these people they in these readings and they say oh my gosh there was there was so much information there was stuff that there's no way he could have known you hand it to them you give it to them and then the person who's giving you the reading is good at it they know they know what to listen for all right all right all right um oh and your dad is bringing her up too well that's funny because you just mentioned her so now your dad is mentioning What's her name? We don't know her name. Do we know her name? Why didn't you just say, oh, your sister goes to college in D.C. Your dad is talking about it. Your sister Elizabeth is in um, in Washington, D.C. going to college. She's she's majoring in anthropology right now. But actually, um, um, journalism is her better area to go to. And she's, she's going to be making a change to journalism. But she's going to have that boyfriend. His name is Jeff. And, oh, he's just toxic. And that relationship's got to end as fast as possible. So don't get your heart on Jeff. Heart on. Don't get your heart um, set on Jeff because he looks good, but he's not going to work out well for your sister, Elizabeth. Actually, the person she's going to meet is going to be somebody named Steve. And she meets him when she's doing laundry. And it's something to do with she's in the washing machine and there's a sock in there. And she doesn't realize it. And she, she okay. See what I'm saying? That's specific. That's much more specific, something we can check. But this vague stuff is just, oh, your dad is mentioning this unnamed sister also. All right. He's happy you two are close, even though there's an age difference. Well, she's obviously not in college, college age, this journalist he's sitting across from. So he knows she's not her twin, probably. They keep showing me September. Somewhere in September, there's a big work opportunity gets presented to you. And they're showing me a circle. Oh, wow. 
not a triangle, you guys, not a square, not a rectangle, not an octog octagon, but a circle. That's symbolic, right? Um, like returning to your roots in a positive way. It's like you're spinning your wheels. Oh, wow. Wheels go around and around. Like the wheels in the bus. They go around and around. All right. You don't want to do that anymore. It's kind of my past life, but opportunities might come up that bring you back to what you might have done before. That might be what I'm seeing in September. It might be. It might be not. You know, it could be anything. You could be hit by a car. You could hit somebody. I don't know. September, it could, it could be nothing it could be something i'm sure you'll figure it out so you've done a lot of healing around your dad and since this passing you've been on a quite a journey no kidding <laughs> said no child ever he's very proud of you and what you're doing no your dad is miserably upset at you and he says get <laughs> get your your uh, gear in of course he's watching over you well, that's what you want to see here of course he's proud of you no of course um you're holding your own and you're not giving up you only have the one son right well okay is that a hit well he knows she has at least one um you yes there's a little girl i see around you i don't know who this is but there's a little girl i'm seeing who's going to be in your life, someone to, you look like a daughter. Are you single? Okay, someone you, you look to like a daughter. So I see a little girl around you, whatever that means. And I don't know who it is. Well, thanks, Thomas John. Just tell us something so we could have something specifically because there's little girls all the time. I mean, there's a little girl at the grocery store. There's a little girl over there. A little girl I ran into over there. A little girl, a little girl, a little girl whatever. Uh, she's going to be in her life. Okay. That's again in the future. Someone you look to like a daughter. Someone you look to like a daughter. Are you single? And she says, I'm dating someone. Now, again, remember this is Chicago and we, I haven't showed you this yet, but this woman had a very public marriage um, to another person who was on the news with her. And that she's divorced is pretty common knowledge in the world of Chicago and, and the world of that that world, if you're tuned into it. I mean, I don't know who's on the news and anything about personal business of people, but it, it wouldn't be hard for Thomas John to find that out. So if you're single and you are look like, you know, you look great and look like somebody who might be out there possibly dating somebody or looking for some new relationship in your life or, you know something of that sort, then it's not much to say you may meet somebody who's also in the same age group you have are in, who's also probably has children and the odds are 50, 50 that you're going to have a daughter. All right. The guy I've been seeing um, is somebody I've been dating for about a year. Okay. So that might be known and seems to be going well um, but I noticed him pulling back on me when I told him the news about my job. She's saying this to herself. She's writing this in the book. She's she apparently not saying this, Thomas John. Maybe she is. I don't know, but it's not got quotes on it here. Okay. Okay. Thomas John says he really likes you, but your dad is saying he has commitment issues. Well, Okay. One thing they're telling me is you will know within this year if the relationship's going to happen. This isn't going to drag on for five years, whatever. Okay, so it's just not specific. It's 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 just generic stuff that they say to people. And, oh, there's another person coming through. Do you have a Martha anywhere? He just now remembered there's a Martha somewhere. And she says, oh my God, with an exclamation point. Martha was my sister-in-law. We were very close, but we haven't talked much since her brother and I got divorced. She's telling him she was my sister-in-law and we were very close, but we haven't talked much since her brother and I got divorced. Now, she doesn't. So like all she does is throw out the name Martha. Again, in a if you have the full transcript and you see a lot of these psychics, well, the cold readers, not how, not Thomas John, but cold readers, they'll say you have a Sandy, a Martha, a Joan, a Fred, a blah, 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 blah. And one of them hits. 
especially if they're throwing out names that are of the generation using this uh, social security um, birth names um, uh, URL that I've given you guys in multiple videos where you put in a decade and you can see what the top top 100, top multiple hundred um, names are for that era, uh, male, female names. So if you throw out a Martha, then it would it would mean probably somebody in a generation of a certain age. So it's a common name. He didn't throw out like a name like Evangelica or something, some some name that probably wouldn't have hit, but something that's in that genre. All right. Well, it hit. We know Thomas John's looking this up, right? I told you, spoilers. But if you're with a cold reader and you throw out a name, oh, and if there had been 15 other names mentioned, they wouldn't make it in the book. They wouldn't make it when you're telling the story to your friends. Oh my gosh, I saw the psychic this week. He knew exactly that I, my sister-in-law was Martha and that we were really close, but we're not that close anymore because now I'm divorced from her brother. And that's how the story comes out to the person you're telling it to. Or you say, he got Martha and there's no way he could have known Martha. But actually, there was a lot of other names that didn't hit. And I'm not going to mention those. She doesn't go to her friends and family and say, oh, my gosh, I had this amazing reading today. And the psychic mentioned Martha and Johnny and, and Marianne and Elizabeth and Tony and um, Frank and John. And But the only one that I hit on was Martha. All those others didn't make sense course nobody has that kind of conversation with people right okay all right she says i feel somebody is connecting with her your mother-in-law had cancer right and she says yes and he says it must be her you must have been involved in her passing well that's scary are you accusing her of murder or what <laughs> i know what she means and he knows what he means because he knows um he's and she says in her mind again because there's no quotes on this she might have told him i don't know my dad died of cancer on father's day 2001 my mother-in-law died two years later on father's day as well i was present with each of them when they took their last breath okay and he says i feel that even though you weren't married to her son anymore which he already knows right you two still have a connection well no kidding you have a son <laughs> That's that's our grandchild you've given her. I get a very pushy energy from her. She has a real presence to me, kind of a smart ass. Well, again, it's going back to just generic thing. If it hits, it hits. If it doesn't hit, then they deflect and you forget. You forget, he, you move on to another subject and then you deflect in your mind about what it could have possibly, oh, I forgot all about that. I Oh yeah, I don't even remember him saying that. Or if you challenge them on it and you say, no, she actually was a very gentle, loving person who never pushed anybody ever. He would say, well, when she was younger, she did. Or now she's taken it up or on the other side. Right. So again, they can never be wrong. So she says affirmative. And then she starts talking about how Kathy used to taught her sons how to throw a baseball and cared more about the Chicago Cubs than most men. She had a wicked sense of humor and chain smoked skinny cigarettes. I missed her every day. And who is Richard? Okay, another cold reading name. But she says, that's my ex-father-in-law. Well, he's here too. Well, thank you for telling him who you who it is. Um, they're both very connected to your son. Oh my gosh. The grandparents, the dead grandparents are connected to their grandchild that you've already mentioned. Wow. Oh my gosh, my jaw. I have to put it back up. I can't believe it that the grandparents would be connected to their grandchild. And watching over him, I'm sure they love him very much. And they can I remember. All right. So Thomas. So here's what she says. Let me screen share this again because this is what you know, all that was getting to this part where I'm I'm posting right now. While Thomas could have wrong screen.
right here. Oops, sorry, everybody. While Thomas could have researched my grandpa John's name and my brother moving to St. Louis or sister being in DC, it would have been nearly impossible to find the name of my ex-sister-in-law, Martha, or former in-laws, Kathy and Richard. And then I see you're moving to, did you just pull out of a deal for a house sale or something like today? Oh, yeah, like today? Shut the front door. Yes, I said, totally amazed. I feel like it's a good thing to do. You don't want to do business with those people. Just pretend like it didn't. And she says, you can't Google that. Okay, so that's like the only thing there that is actually anything of interest. And we don't know. We don't know if she could have been overheard. We, She said that she hung up the phone. She had this conversation, hung up the phone and walked in the building. So we don't know if he had been, he could have been right outside the door or somebody else. And, and then she goes into the building and then he comes in behind her or whatever. We don't know. It could have been a guess. It could have something he knew. He could have overheard. She could have misremembered. I don't know, but that's not that great. Because if so, give us some real good stuff, like something specific, not just like, well, you know, there's a better cell coming later. Well, can you give me the name of the person so I can give them a call now and start, <laughs> and let's get on it, you know, because I want to sell this property. Let's go. What's the guy's name? Can you give me his email? I'm going to write it down right now. Let's, let's make this sell. If he's going to buy it in three months, let's just, let's just do it now. All right. So challenge accepted she says it would be nearly impossible to find the name of my ex-sister-in-law martha or former in-laws kathy and richard what do you guys think how impossible how nearly impossible it is i'm gonna have to put this on my resume okay not that i'm working but let's take a look at this I hope you're sitting down because this is just like going to be like, like amazing. I mean, be prepared to be amazed. You guys amazed? This is her father-in-law, Richard Leo Champlin, died in 1996. And he talks about where he's from, owner operator of the where he worked. He married somebody named Kath, Kathleen Britt, who survives with one daughter, Martha L. Champlin. Martha, that's his daughter's name. Wow. And two sons, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. And Clay of Chicago. Clay is the man she married. You amazed? And see how it's highlighted right there? I was able to just find it because I just did a, a search on newspapers.com and it just came up. And it, it, it hits partly because you've got um, Clay. Because I know her husband, her ex-husband's name is Clay Champlin. Because I'll show you in a minute. All right. So are you still sitting down? I hope you're still sitting down. Okay. So Always watch these videos sitting down because you never know what amazing thing I'm going to have. So look, here's Kathleen. Kathy, she died of cancer on Sunday, June 15th in her home. Um, again, Britt Champlin married Richard. He died of cancer. Um, she survived by two sons. And this is what pulls it up, you guys. This is the one I found first because you do a newspaper search for the word Jennifer, J-E-N-N-I-F-F-E-R. Remember I said that earlier, having a name that's unusual helps pull things up. And I also search for the name Clay and then it pulls up this stuff. And then here, then you put in more information. Oh, here you go. A daughter, Martha. There you go. If he wanted to embellish, it's all here. It says here, her, along with her family, her great passion was sports. She loved Notre Dame football, women's and men's basketball, the Chicago Cubs, the Seattle Mariners, and the Chicago Bears. She will be remembered for her keen intellect, wise sense of humor, quick wit, extraordinary loyal, 
loyalty to her friends across the country with whom she kept in regular communication and all the other places she you know had her um you know she volunteered on you guys stunned i know you're stunned try not to look so stunned and as i said this is a popular woman she was a uh, jennifer j-e-n-n-i-f-f-e-r she is known here's her wikipedia article that's not hard it has all kinds of information in here it has her birthday which makes it so much easier to find on ancestry which i could have easily have done and it talks about you know where she went you know where she went just her background her career her personal life she is the daughter of the late tim weigel a longtime chicago television sports and news anchor and his first wife kathy warrington who's also the sister of television uh, newscaster uh, rafer um she married clay champlin which makes it so easy to find the information <laughs> and a chicago radio traffic and news reporter again again it's got their information on here about um these are people in the news these are if you're a local person in chicago you kind of know these people if you watch the news at least that's how it was when i was growing up they have their child's name here um they divorced in 2011 he's giving her the reading in 2015 she said her parents had an extra i and her f in her name to differentiate her given how common her first name is well it made it a lot more easy a lot easier to find you when you're hot reading thank you so much here's her father who also has a wikipedia page and it says on the Wikipedia page that his father was John. Gosh, this is hard. This is hard stuff, you guys. Well, she did say it was. It wouldn't have been that hard for Thomas John to find the the her family. A broadcast announcer did voiceovers for national commercials, and his mother had been a big band singer with Tommy Dorsey. Oh, well, Thomas could have mentioned something about that. And boy, that would have been a hit too. So Toxbury, we moved up and dun, 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 and talks about his death. He'd been, he had a brain tumor. He went under surgery. It turns out he had radiation. He went to work six months later. He had a, 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 died exactly a year to the day after his uh, operation personal information he married his high school sweetheart kathy um, they had two children and uh, jennifer who became a television reporter and then divorced in 75 he married carol so there's so much information they had a daughter named teddy um, he had a side career of playing football for the chicago Lions in the 1970s all of this information if thomas john wanted to glean and and and, and give back to her he could have i mean how lazy that he didn't even do it Here's her brother. And again, it has a whole bunch of information, acting, journalism, television, and so on. He left his job in 2020 to start his own media and public relations company. What do you guys think? Are you amazed? Is that impossible? Did I just did I just do the impossible? I don't understand how Jennifer would think that anything <laughs> that that would have been interesting or easy i mean difficult i mean really when you believe when you are trying to um when you want to hit when you want it, when you feel like it's going to be real you're you're likely to just go ahead and go with it and and give the information so she could have walked in there and sat there with a stone face and stared at him and he would have had all this information. Because it's not hard to look it up. It's legacy.com is free. I use newspapers.com. I also use um, ancestry.com. It is not difficult. 10 minutes, maybe, maybe 20 minutes. It depends. And it is not that hard. It depends if it's, they have a really common name. And again, it doesn't have to be who your in-laws are. It doesn't have to be the any specific thing. It's not like he said, your second grade teacher is Maria Elizabeth uh, Madison. 
if that's what he found, that's what he found. It's that's what I mean. It's whatever they find. It doesn't mean he has to, he, it wasn't like she walked in with a piece of paper in her hand saying, all right, I want to know the name of my second grade teacher. I want to know my ex sister-in-law's first name. It's not like she had that and said, that's what I want specifically to know. Whatever he finds when he looks around, he asks his friends, Hey, I'm going to be interviewed by uh, Jennifer uh, uh, Weigel. You, you know, the people you worked at the times, you know, these people tell me something. I mean, what's she like? Is she going to be really nice? Oh yeah. Well, you know, and they tell you something and then you turn around and repeat it back. Oh, her mother was such a, a thrill. She was really into baseball. Her mother-in-law, I'm sorry. Her mother-in-law um, was really into that. And, and then he just repeats it back. Why am I getting somebody who's died of cancer? Um, who's very much so like they, they they're like really like they're throwing something like i think it's a baseball this is somebody in your family it's a female she was she was really into baseball okay so whatever they find they just repeat it back you guys got this you know this stuff okay so let's go back to the book very briefly and then we can sum this up. I hope if you guys are liking this, you like and share and, and leave me comments and subscribe and all that stuff. Because, you know, it's just been a year since I started this channel and I am, I can't believe it. I can't believe we're still doing this. This is amazing. I'm, I'm enjoying myself. I hope you're enjoying yourself. I hear from people all the time say they like it. And then I get some people who are like saying some not so nice things about me. Okay, but they never look at the whole video and they never like read the comments and like what I've posted under sheep. But they all have a comment. You're just jealous of Thomas or whoever the psychic is. All right, now I mentioned this briefly in the article that I wrote, Thomas John, same as he ever was. But let's go over this now that we have the book right in front of us because I couldn't... Um. I have it right here now. So let's look at that. All right. So um, he starts talking to her about being Catholic and he was raised in a Catholic home and all these other things and his family life, Thomas John's family life. Free will. All na, 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 na. Okay. I definitely see you selling your home and so on. Okay. Oh. Um, continues let me see if it oh well let me continue okay so let's go to the other article this is barnes and noble when i read this before i was using amazon and now you can't get can't see this on the amazon thing so let's look over here where i quote this here only got like 900 screens open <laughs> The curse of having multiple screens, large screens. So going back to this, this is the article, this one. And this is in the book. And I'm kind of sort of quoting it here. All right, Jennifer, Jennifer Wiggle. So she is decided that she's going to have a show. She's going to do a show at the Willamette Theater. And she posts about it on Facebook. And then she is flooded with messages from people after posting it on Facebook, telling me that Thomas was a fraud. And that's quotes, because that's what she writes in her book. And then she's really concerned about her personal reputation because she's a public figure who is apparently would be endorsing somebody who, according to the article that she was reading at the time, said he had scammed someone out of money for a security deposit and did research on his subjects through PayPal before his readings challenging his integrity. Okay, that's what the articles, that's what the article she was reading said. Thomas John doesn't do that over over PayPal and no, it's easier than that. So I mean he could, but it's easier than that. Weigel called Thomas John minutes after reading this and asked him about it. And Thomas John responded, and this is in quotes because this is what he said to her. And she wrote it in the book. I tried to get out of a lease by subleasing it myself through Craigslist. 
It didn't go very well. I bounced a check and made a couple of bad choices. That was almost 10 years ago, and that's not who I am anymore. He told Weigel that he went home and got his life together and his gifts became much more pronounced and that he paid everybody back. We all make mistakes and I'm no exception. Okay. And then she writes in the book, oh, thank you. I'm so glad to see that you're not, um, you're not perfect and that you've made mistakes just like all of us have. And oh, okay, thank you for telling me. I appreciate it. Well, in Chicago in 2009, as we all know, there is more going on than that. And in this article that I have here for you, and you can check it out yourself. Hopefully you've already seen it. It's only been three days. I don't know why. I think you've probably read it. Like, like you have no life. <laughs> so I have the arrest warrants, arrest report, incident report, supplementary report, criminal history. There's a ton of these documents out there. Here, let me click on one. Let's see if we can see it. There you go. Chicago Police Department, one of 12. And it goes on and it talks about, it's got some redactions. I did not redact this. This is something they did. So we go on and on. It talks about the victims. There are 12 victims right here. 11 of them he took money from. This one right here, this case involves identity theft as Flanagan used, that's his name, Flanagan, blank to lure victims, inventory number, whatever. So we're still looking into this, but we've figured out that he was using various names when he was doing this scam in 2008 and 2009. It, went up, it was on for a while. And that he used some, like a name, um, like a professor's name or a doctor's name. He was using real person's names. And so whenever he was doing that, um, that person's must, it must've come to their ears because they filed a identity theft case against him in New York city. And we've that, I'm, you know, it's only a matter of time, but before somebody gets around to finding that for me. So there's 11 victims there. And when you add that up, that is, it says here, it says um, 350, 60, 575, 780, 1500, 400, 850, 400, 650, 780, um, 324. I think it adds up to a, a little bit Gosh, I don't remember right now. I don't want to say. You guys added up. It was it was more than a thousand dollars, more like three or four thousand dollars. And then it says additional victims. See where it says that. And if we look on the next page, see so here's page one two. Somebody in Pennsylvania, somebody in New York. Oh, a whole page goes down to number forty nine: Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Florida, London, England, Massachusetts, Oklahoma. Look, there's another page. All these people here. It's 63 people on top of the 11 on the other page, plus the person who had the identity theft. And that is over $40,000. So what is it Thomas John says? What did he say? What did he say? Do you guys remember? He says that he he had something he had. To, he was subleasing an apartment and um you know something happened and the check bounced and he got in some trouble and now he's you know and he's paid every paid people back or paid the person back or whatever it was well if you look let's see page 10 page 11 page 12 is that How many said this? Um, seems like there was another place. Oh, there's so many papers, guys. Don't make me go through them all. They're all there for you to look at. But it says that he does not pay may pay restitution to these people. They only charge him for two because they charge him for the two people that he actually met in person. All the other 70 or whatever people that they know of, it was done over the phone and over um, the internet. So there's only two people because he did two lineups. He had to go and stand there 
with other people who look like him, apparently. And the victims walk in and point to him and say, that's the guy right there. He did two of those. So Chicago Police Department only charged him for those two. It says it in the report. And it says they made him pay the court costs of $525 or something. And it says no restitution paid. No psychological examination and that he's on probation for 30 months. No jail time other than whatever he probably had to go through for the temporary time he was must have been in jail. So kind of a little bit different than what Jennifer, she just believed him when he said, oh yeah, it was just a, it was just a little thing, right? Here's what, let me remind you. There's a cat purring on my microphone here right now. So if you hear purring, then that's what it is. Oh, here it is. Okay. Um, right in here. So it talks a lot about the money. Um, 11 incidences. And that was over $6,500 for an average of about $600 per person. And then it lists another 63 more people with the amount totaling 40000 taken from these victims. And then it it goes down here and it talks more about the victims and some of the other things that happened to him. But going back up here to what journal the journalist said, he says, and she quotes him, I tried to get out of a lease. Look, look. I tried to get out of a lease by subleasing it myself through Craigslist and it didn't go very well. I bounced a check and made a couple of bad choices. That was almost 10 years ago and not who I am anymore. I tried to get out of a lease by subleasing it myself through Craigslist. He didn't. He was living in a U-Haul trailer. He did not have any property. And he was he was renting property all over the world, all over the United States. It was all over the United States. I bounced a check. No, you did not bounce a check. Well, maybe you bounced a check, but no, you were taking checks and you had multiple anonymous people's names. One of the names that you were using was a real person's name and they were upset enough to file um, uh, against you in New York City, which we're still looking for. Well, we will get to it. It's only been a few days. All right. I bounced a check and made a couple of bad choices. Just a couple. Uh, that was almost 10 years ago and not who I am. He says, and he paid everyone back. No, no, he didn't pay anybody back. If you go into the other places, like uh, where we first kind of learn about this, it's this website called 1-800-NOTES. Let me show it to you. I keep saying I'm going to show it to people and I don't necessarily show it to them. Now, back in the day, 2008, 2009, if you were scammed by somebody and you got a phone number because they their phone number showed up on your phone, you could go and you could take the phone number and put it into a website. And you can still do this, actually. And it's like 1-800-REVERSE-NUMBER-LOOKUP or some kind of thing. And then this website still exists. And what it does is it looks, it, it, it says, wait, that number has already been used for, here's a whole thread about all the people who are also being scammed by that same phone number. So let's, let's take a quick look. And this is called 800notes.com. And you look down here. Where, 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 where? Okay, so. Who calls from this phone number? Who calls from getting calls from this number? Because he used multiple phone numbers. So this one, I think I was looking at yesterday. Let's try this one. This only has three posts. No, it has a whole bunch. Um, this person also, okay. Talks about him being, oh, he is now in jail for fraud and theft. Well, he wasn't in jail. Well, at least I know if this person worked a scam with eBay and jewelry about two years ago as well. Total nut job. 
I'm not saying that. They're saying that. Okay. This person says, my best friend from high school does know about this and knows Thomas John. Uh, he was telling me all about the scam just because he thought it was a funny story to tell, but I thought I'd come here and pass along the information. According to my friend, this is a scam. I guess there was positive comments on this site. Um, right. Okay, he was arrested on July 2nd. It's now in Cook County Jail and his arraignment is tomorrow. I know Thomas and heard about the scam months ago, but I didn't believe it. If there's anything I can do, please let me know. Oh my God, I know this guy. He was a creep when I met him. I didn't realize he was into this kind of stuff though. Yikes. Ah, I emailed this person. My boyfriend and I tried to sublet an apartment for a week last March. We are graduate students at Arizona State University and we're visiting for our professional meetings. We transferred $100 as a deposit. Our initial contact was a Kelly Jacobs. Kelly is, his, is Thomas John's sister, by the way. But Thomas Flanagan, her husband, was the account we transferred the money to. The account number, she gives the account number, a Bank of America and the zip code. We retail, retailed all the email, we retailed all the emails if necessary. Please contact us if you need any further information. Beware, this person has been released from jail and could be going back to his old ways. Read all these old posts and beware. I'm sure his phone number will change again. And we know he didn't end his this thing. He just has new victims. Now he's using grieving women who are vulnerable because they want to talk to dead family members. Um, and his con now is not the psychic stuff, but it's the book a reading and he flips a coin and, and maybe he'll give you a reading someday or maybe he won't. And judging for the amount of people that I know that do not have readings and they're very pissed about not getting their reading, their service, they paid for a service. He's not giving it to him. Years pass. All right. So he's going back to his own ways. He's running the scam while out on bail. This has been reported to the Philadelphia and New York City uh, authorities. I guess we got to look that up too. I was also scammed, but I, has anyone been able to get a refund? Is it even worth trying? No. Nope. All right. This one says this clown scammed a friend of mine a year and a half ago. He's since been busted for a bunch of things. And now it seems he's doing a scam again. I talked with him online a number of times trying to figure out a way to get my, my out of town friends deposit back for an apartment. Never happened. He's a pathological NUT and it would be nice to see this guy busted. He is a parasite that seemingly has no moral compass. I think the thought of getting a refund has to be thought of in terms of seeing him drop kicked into jail for a while. I would imagine the guy has no fluid assets as he probably spends the money he scams on dresses and wigs, which might be handy in jail. Ooh, that's not very nice, but they're pretty pissed. Okay. Um, is there anything we can do? Right. Let's see. I was able to get a refund overnighted to me just by emailing him and telling him I wanted one and that if I didn't, I'd contact the police until I got one. Honestly, I think this guy's had enough problems and realizes what he's done. <laughs> My refund was only $80, but I think even people like this have it. Oh, let's see if this person scam, but not broken has a big sign on the back of, uh, on the back of them that says, kick me again professional victim i will trust you oh it must be nice to have that kind of personality it always believes the best of people um oh this one says they got the email they got they got um oh the guy's trying to make good my refund was 750 dollars, and it came from his mom oh oh that's so nice okay we texted a few times. I Googled this number after the fact. I found all this information. I had a different experience with this person. He had put up an ad on Western MA Craigslist in the men seeking men personal section. And we were planning to meet for a blind date or a hookup. He gave me an address in Massachusetts, probably some random innocent person's house and made up stories about it being a former Marine and claimed to be the sexy straight stud. He sent me a photo of a different person initially. He is clearly disturbed and need a serious psychological help. Okay, so there's pages and pages of this stuff. Um, I've seen you in Housewives as a psychic. And of course, I knew you were Lady Vera. You're the same person. 
So just comment after comment after comment. So it's all there. So Jennifer isn't much of a, I mean, that's back from 2008, 2009 and forward. So Jennifer, you didn't look him up as Thomas John Flanagan, did you? You just asked him, you said, what's this with you having scammed some people in the past? And he says, one person, I was subletting and I made a bad decision and my check bounced and that's all it was. Okay. I trust you. Really, Jennifer? Come on now. You should be a little tougher than that. You're from Chicago. You're a journalist. You know, you've lived life. You've had a child, at least one. Your parents look like they were tough and good people and your in-laws look like the same. Don't let people take advantage of you. Why are you so trusting? I mean, it's nice to be trusting to have that kind of gene hey you have that gene where you you know see the good in people i tend to be an optimist the cat i tend to be an optimist but <laughs> no come on now a google search of his name and and had put in his name and like the word fraud scam con any of those phrases it would have pulled up his it would have pulled up this 800 number, it would have pulled up his Better Business Bureau stuff. He would have pulled up all kinds of stuff. You would have found tons of information on him. You wouldn't have found my articles because I didn't have, I hadn't, I hadn't heard of him at that time. So Jennifer, if you're watching this, sorry, been tough, but you know, it's because people like you enable people like that this scam he was doing in 2008 and 2009 for craigslist and who knows what else he was doing is now being done today on vulnerable women who are desperate to be in touch with their family members their loved ones they're not stupid i'm not saying you're stupid either but they believe in mediumship as you do as well. And they don't do a Google search. They don't look it up because they believe and because they're vulnerable. They're trusting. They wouldn't think that somebody would have done something like that. So they do it. They give them their money. And if you look at this article, and I am not just telling you, you can click on the links and see for yourself don't to ask Thomas John, go and look. You are enabling him, Jennifer. And if you keep quiet about this, if you, if you read this and you say, oh my gosh, I knew something was wrong or oh, wow, I can't believe I, I can't believe it. Wow. And if you don't say something, then you're enabling him further to be able to victimize more women more grieving women i i can't even imagine how much money he's got from these women he has not done a reading for and we know darn well he's just looking them up so i suggest strongly that you have the moral character find it within yourself to publicly publicly Jennifer, we know you can write, come out, podcast or video or article and say, I was flummoxed. I done wrong. I didn't do my due diligence and look him up. And I took him at his word because I'm trusting. And that's always nice to be trusting. But your, your person in has some authority, at least in Chicago. You have a reputation. You have a Wikipedia page. People look to you and they say, ah, this woman who has street creds, she's had a wonderful life in Chicago with all this wonderful family around her. She must know. And if she says he's okay, she put him in chapter, a whole chapter on him in the first chapter of her book that he must be okay. I'm going to go ahead and get my reading from Thomas John. And they give him the money and 
very likely are not going to get the reading from Thomas John. And they're not, it's not just the money that's lost. We have, and other videos here show screenshots from people who are rescheduling their surgeries. They're missing work. Some people said they've missed, had to call out from work or leave work three times or more, lose the day of work so that they could be home on their phone to be able to, to be there for their call with Thomas John and he doesn't show up. Some people say they had to get a babysitter. Some people had to readjust their lives, move things around, replan things so that they could be home so they could be on the phone with Thomas John, who doesn't show up, either ghosts them or he cancels. And it's usually at the last minute. And it goes on and on and on. And they aren't getting their money back. Well, a small percentage gets their money back, but it is very unlikely they get their money back. He makes their call, he makes it out a year in advance or six months in advance. And the credit card company's like, when it gets to six months, and then he says, Oh my gosh, the power is out here. I am so sorry. And they go, okay, Thomas. Uh, he's like, I, I'll get you in and I'll get you in soon. And then some of these people are for years are rescheduled. The credit card company isn't paying them back anymore because this is way too long. Also, he's not using PayPal anymore. Why? I think you know why. PayPal has had enough refunds and they've nixed him. I'm sure that's it. I don't know that for a fact. I just know that he has to mail you a check. And I've got lots of people who've shown me their checks from him with his sister's address on it. And he has to literally write a check, put it in a mail, and he has to get somebody's address. And a lot of these women are freaked out about him knowing their address. And he mails them the check. A lot of the women say, I, I, I'm, I'm going to pass on it because I don't want to give him my address. And all these conversations you can see for yourself. If you want to spend a few hours and look through it, go for it. Jennifer. You gave him a chapter of your book fully endorsing him. You gave him a show. You reviewed his book. That was 2017, was it? Are you going to make amends? Are you going to tell these women, I'm sorry, I messed up? Are you? Or are you going to just keep your mouth shut and pretend you didn't know? Or it's none of your business? A woman. A woman allowing other women to be preyed on because you don't have, what? You don't have the nerve to, to stand up to him? Are you afraid of him? I'm here. I'm doing it. And I don't have the creds you do. So we'll see. We'll see if Jennifer and all the other people who've enabled him, who have made this possible for him to continue this, which is ridiculous. These people on this 800 line, this website, do you think that they would be totally shocked that in 2024, he would still be doing a con of this sort? That he would be on TV, two TV shows, both canceled on the first season, a show in Vegas. Heck, in October, he's got a cruise. He's going on a cruise with he's, and his fans can go on with him. It's up to you people, the enablers, and the people who've been victims of him to take this on. I'm not managing it. I am not going to give you all the emails of all the people to write to. I'm not doing that. I have spent years doing this and I have put it all together for you in multiple videos, multiple articles. And this other one has all the documents there with screenshots on it. Your job now is to stop complaining about how you got taken advantage of or how you're sick of these grief vampires and sit down with a list of people to contact and send them that article and say, hey, I want to tell you my story about how I was scammed 
And here's here's an article that shows how all these others scammed. And you did an interview with him. And you were Mr. and Mrs. Polite in saying, oh, what a nice medium you are. I want you to know what kind of person you are you are giving your your time to. Or if you ha if you haven't been scammed and you do care about this, send out an email or a post somewhere or whatever and say, FYI, I want you have done an interview, a positive interview with this man. You are enabling him. I want you to be aware of the person that you are doing this to and what he's continuing to do for years. Can you do that? I shouldn't have to do all this. I'm sitting here with my cat. For I've been doing these videos on Thomas John and articles on Thomas John and researching Thomas John for, for what, five years now? I shouldn't have to do this. Thank you, everybody, for listening. I know it's a long video. I've been holding on to this for a while because I didn't want to release it until this article published, and now it's published. I really want to see your comments, please, especially those things, seeing if you have any Aries or what's going on in September. I want to know. September 2024, I see something's going to happen. Something's going to change, and you're going to start some projects this summer. Yeah. All right. I would appreciate that. I have lots of other work to do. And I really want this one done. There's a lot to move on to. This is low hanging fruit. We need to pick it. It needs to be gone. We need to be done. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Have a great evening or whatever. Bye.